guy. So are you seeing this full screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's start going through this. Uh, I'm sure a couple people are still coming in. Uh, we've got a warm up in Canvas. Uh, we have a presentation on mechanical technology and fluid technology. Uh, and then a couple videos on mechanical technology and fluid technology. Since I feel the presentations we're using are nice, but they're not really telling us that much. Where you guys are trying to identify these systems in a house, I want you to have a more robust understanding of what these technologies look like, what they could be, the kinds of items that they comprise, okay? What was due today was your Project 4B Haunted House. Uh, there's Joey Nickel. Uh, so your 4B Haunted House presentation with structural and materials technology is due. I hate to say it, last count, I had very, very few, and we took the whole end of class last time to try and work on these. Um, what I'm gonna do today to be a little different is we're gonna go through our stuff, and then I'm gonna, I want everyone to do their vocabulary quiz. And I am gonna do it right along with you on screen. I want everyone to have a completed vocabulary quiz for today, okay? I'm gonna give you the time. I'm gonna do it with you. I want you to know how to do this. I'm still getting occasionally someone who doesn't know what the words are. They're in the title of the assignment, okay? So what is going to be due is your vocab quiz, mechanical technology and fluid technology. Ideally, we'll knock that out today. Uh, and you also have your project 4C, structural technology and materials technology. So you will be adding five slides to your pres or six slides, you know, a title slide for structural technology, five examples of structural technology, a title slide for materials technology, and then five examples of materials technology. I'm hopefully gonna have time to show you the two people that have turned in their work did a great job and I'd like to share it because again, I think everybody understands better what you need to do when you've seen a project, okay? Um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, so what our, our objective and goal for the day is, is that you will be learning about the differences between mechanical and fluid technology as well as common applications, okay? So 4C, structural. Hang on, that's a book. I, I made a mistake here. Our project 4C is mechanical and fluid technology, not structural. Hang on, I can, I can fix this, I swear. Ah, uh, yes. Hate for anyone to be confused, as apparently I was. All right. So the, the new project that is going to be due in a week next Friday is 4C, Mechanical Technology and Fluid Technology. Ideally, we will have at least half the class next time to try and work on these. I really want everyone to get these projects in. Hang on, someone is asking. I, Brooklyn, you did it perfectly as far as I can tell. No, you didn't, you didn't do only structural. I don't think. Uh, yours is the project we'll be looking at. So uh, I thought so. Uh, I like it when my students are doubting themselves but they really did it all right. Uh, so yes, our new, for the next four projects we are doing there are going to be two core technologies in them and they will be worth 40 points a piece. Each project is 40 points. So please, please, let's get one of these in. It's gonna really help your grade. 
I want everybody in my class passing. Uh, and I hate to say about a third of my students are in trouble. So I'm gonna be doing the best I can to hold your hand and make sure that we get this stuff in. Even if you don't understand it, I am just gonna show you and we will figure it out, all right? <clears throat> okay, the first thing I'd like to do is let's do the warm up and then we have sad and depressing things to talk about, all right? So I don't wanna be in here. I do wanna be in here. I'm pretty positive my warm up I can preview. Okay, so uh, we will use the fabulous spinner of not death, but you got to answer a question. All right, so the question one, making iron from iron ore uses what core technology? Is it A, structural technology, B, material technology, C, biotechnology, or D, mechanical technology? You can put them in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna ask someone anyway. Layla. Layla, what do you think is the right answer here? Which technology is making iron from iron ore? Layla? Layla, you out there? Let's try one. Ah, my friend Mackenzie Green. Mackenzie, could you tell me which one you think is appropriate for the core technology to make iron from iron ore? Um, I said material technology. Material technology, correct. <clears throat> Again, just in terms of test taking strategies, basically what I'm doing in our warm ups is trying to look in our last lecture or something that we just did and find a couple questions to you know pique our curiosity, get us back where we're supposed to be. So the idea that the last lecture was materials or structure might have narrowed down what you were gonna pick. Um, okay, question two, would the box around your desktop computer be considered an example of structural technology? True or false? Would the box around your desktop computer be considered an example of structural technology? I have Jackson McKinnon. I think Jackson's here. No. Well, I'm gonna go with Jackson Blanco Prudencia then, my new friend. Jackson, can you tell me, would the box around your desktop computer be considered an example of structural technology? Mm. It's a little bit of a weird one. I don't know, Mr. Okay, but think about it. Structural technology is supports and containers. So like a barrel, a barrel is structural technology. The box that goes around your computer for a desktop computer, that's also a container. That no, is containing your computer parts. So I agree that it's a tricky question. Uh, I'd asked it in class and I thought it might not have sunk in. So I just wanted to say that because that was one of the few things I could think of. That's false. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So that's our warm up. Great job. Uh, everybody do it, and I will give you full credit no matter what you get. Right now, I need to talk to you about what happened last Wednesday. Let me move my picture of me so I can stare at me while I talk to you. Because I tend to look up in the corner and it doesn't make for good eye contact. I've had real trouble talking about this because what happened on Wednesday really, really deeply upset me. My stomach has been queasy and my body has felt vibrating ever since. I just wanted you to know I know that we have a really diverse class. What happened on Wednesday 
is not who we are as Americans. We have gone 250 years with a peaceful transfer of power. And our current president has sworn on his last election that he would not agree to a peaceful transfer of power. The fact that lying and lying and lying has led us to this place, it just breaks my heart. I can't tell you. So I wanna validate any feelings you're having, whether you like Joe Biden or you like President Trump. What happened on Wednesday is not who we are as American people. But I hate to say, our country is so split in half that apparently it really is who we are as American people, that we have to look in the mirror and see that the people who were in that march really look and sound like everyday normal Americans. And what really upsets me is the fact that they have just been lied to and lied to and lied to, and they believe the lies. So where do we go from here? How do we heal? How do we talk to each other? How do we find a better tomorrow? I don't have the answers, but I have great faith in the people in this, let's call this a room, the people in this room, who we are, we look out for each other. We have compassion for each other. We hold out a hand to help each other up when we fall down. So I don't know if anyone wants to talk about this or put something in the chat about how you're feeling or how this has made you feel. I know that talking about it typically makes me cry and I'm embarrassed for that. I don't wanna cry in front of my students but it is deeply troubling and deeply upset. So I just wanted to validate any and all of your feelings, whether you are angry for President Trump or angry against President Trump, we have a new future ahead of us. Wednesday was a very dark day, a rainy day. As they said, it is a day that will live in infamy. My grandfather was at Pearl Harbor. He was in command of Wheeler Field at the time. They call Pearl Harbor a day that will live in infamy. The idea that we can no longer say the United States of America has had a peaceful transition of power for 250 years is gone, trampled under the feet of egotistical, self-interested people. That's all I have to say. But I did get one comment from a student in a class. It hurts me to say it. She said, I'm from an immigrant family. And yesterday I felt fear like I had never felt before for me and my family. And I never wanna feel that again. It really hurts me to think my students being afraid of the president of the United States, of being afraid of what their government is doing. That is not appropriate. That is not who we are as Americans. All right, that's enough of my spiel. I just wanted you to know how much I care about you, how much I care about our country, and how violated I felt seeing people rummaging through my capital. I totally, you know, oh, sorry. I totally agree with you, Mr. Swift. Um, I think that it was completely disrespectful to, you know, for the first time ever to have, you know, the um, Confederate flag within the Capitol building. That has never no, happened. It's not the first time ever, but they well, did a okay. lot to ban it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, and it's completely terrible and awful. And the fact that, you know, people are even comparing that to the Black Lives Matter protests is just completely way well, off. I mean, this no. is like, um, like sure, it's a form of protest, but like, 
there's they weren't fighting for anything they were fighting against something they were fighting against oh they were fighting for their hero that's, yeah that's but the problem. I, I don't know i just feel like um it was just completely two separate things in that a the police officers were not at all reacting like they would have if this was a black lives matter protest b the black lives matter protests you know had nowhere near as severe a riot as uh riding the Capitol building. No. I mean, there was like the target or whatever, but I don't think that you can compare a target to um, the Capitol building. It's just not comparable. And, um, you know, as terrible as it is that they didn't wear masks, at least I'm hopeful that that'll help identify them in the future. So that there they you can- go. No, the, the Capitol is covered in cameras. I, you know, the problem is, you know, so many people, are you really going to put that many people in jail? And I... Like, realistically, it's not great during COVID, but I still think that it... No, there, there has to be a consequence. There has yeah. to be a penalty. You cannot do this. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for your kind words. You know, all I can say is yesterday was a beautiful, bright, warm day. There are brighter days to come. One of the things that was very exciting yesterday was the idea that Merrick Garland was nominated by Mr. Biden to be the new uh, attorney general. His words on this really touched me, that there should not be a different justice system for white protesters versus black protesters, for rich people versus disadvantaged people, for white people versus black people versus yellow people versus red people. There should be one system of justice, not for the friends of the president have a different system, that Democrats have one system and Republicans. There is one system of justice in this land. and Hopefully that will be restored. All right, let's get back to what's really fun. The fabulous word world of mechanical and fluid technology. Um, what's interesting is big crowds like that, mobs, do act like fluids. They have characteristics of fluid. When you see them going into the Capitol and stuff, you can see how the crowds act like a fluid. It's interesting. Uh, trying to bring this all back home. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go in here. Right. What's weird with these lectures is they're using the same materials for the start. So we've been over this at least two, three times. What I am going to do is go through the core technologies just so that we get them in our mind. So biotechnology, alive or once living. A technology system of using, adapting and altering organisms and biological processes for a desired outcome. S applications, stain eating enzymes de in detergent, bacteria, leaching of metals for ore, uh, from ore, altering plant genes to produce better crops. CRISPR is something you hear a lot. Capital C-R-I-S-P-R. That's the name of a process that cuts and can reassemble genes. Um, All right, structural technology, holding up or in. So uh, Jackson, that's where that box comes in. The idea that a structure is holding something in, that's a container and it is structural technology. Okay, we don't like those. Structural technology is a technology system that forms or puts parts and materials together to create supports, containers, shelters, connectors and functional shapes. So applications are the legs of a chair, a city water tower, a swimming pool, building, storm sewer, airplane wing, satellite antenna dish. Okay, structures. So this is a great one for structure. You know, the space station, the water tower, a building, a bridge. Material technology, substances found in both, found in nature, human-made or both. 
So materials technology is the technology system of producing, altering, and combining materials. What's interesting with materials is the altering and combining materials part of it. That it's not just the materials, it's the way they're put together. Uh, applications, producing paper from wood, aluminum from ore, iron from ore, drilling holes in wood, annealing to soften metal, casting ceramic, welding metal, laminating wood, all materials technology. Okay, what I always found interesting was the idea that food was materials technology. Maybe these are displays. Maybe that to make a display makes it part of a technology system. But, you know, the classic things are sort of, a. Uh, this is stucco, this is sort of straw filler. This is how you make walls with that stuff. You've got rubble or gravel, colored stones, wood, all materials technology. All right, here we go. Our new technology is mechanical technology, moving parts working together. I, you know, I still, I don't really get these guys. I don't feel they really have what is important to the technology, you know, winding, machine, power, speed, circuit, electric. Mechanical technology is a technology system that uses mechanical parts working together to produce, control, and transmit motion. I bet you weren't expecting that. I love, it seems very elegant, that mechanical technology is a technology system system that uses mechanical parts working together to produce, control, and transmit motion. Not speed, not, it's motion. A doorknob is transmitting motion. Now, a blender makes a little more sense. The applications of mechanical technology are gear systems in a car transmission, brakes on a bicycle, agi agitator on a washing machine, latch set on a door, those are all mechanical technologies. All right, so here's our latch. We've got a clock. You know, the idea of like looking at all those inner workings of a clock, and that's not, you know, it's not a technology for telling time. It's a technology for creating motion. Uh, the gearing of your bicycle, the brakes on your bicycle, the hinge in a shear. Those are all parts of mechanical technology. Fluid technology, gas and liquids. Now there's two terms that they're gonna be using here um, for gas and liquids. Those are hydraulic and pneumatic. Can somebody tell me what the difference between hydraulic and pneumatic is? It's related to gases and liquids. Which one is liquid and which one is gas? You can put it in the chat or sing out or I can find someone. Hydraulic and pneumatic. Any ideas? We're gonna try someone, let's see. Uh, Tamini Niaza, you have been selected. Tamini, you out there? Yes, hello. Hi. So what do you think? We're, we're gonna be talking about uh, pneumatic devices and hydraulic devices. Which one uses gas and which one uses liquids? And when I say gas, I mean vapor, not gasoline. What do you think? Do you have any idea? Is the hyd hyd um, the hydraulic gas? Hydraulic is actually liquids. Hydraulics are the things that make a backhoe or like a bulldozer raise and lower its scoops. Don't worry, these are weird words and I didn't really expect you to know that. But pneumatic, pneumatic is air. Pneumatic things are things like car tires, uh, the shocks in your car the sh that dampen things, 
those are usually pneumatic shocks, okay? We're gonna learn more about this. So fluid technology is a technology system using fluid, either gaseous pneumatics or liquid hydraulic to apply force or to transport. Okay, applications are air brakes on trucks. Air is a gas. Tires on cars are full of air. Air foils on an airplane are an application of fluid technology. So the spoiler on your car is also an application of fluid technology. Uh, warm air, heating ducts and fans in a building, fluid technology, a hydraulic jack, plumbing in a school, gasoline pump, all fluid technology. Okay, so pneumatics. Pneumatics can be defined as a technology system that uses gas or air pressure to apply force or to transport. So apparently the bus door is pneumatic. This is a pneumatic door closer. There's a piston here and this is full of air. That's what makes it close slowly. I don't think, oh, pneumatic, the idea that a fan is blowing air makes it pneumatic. All right, hydraulics. Hydraulics can be defined as a technology system that uses liquid pressure to apply force or to transport. So I like this, I'm like, why is there a gun in fluid technologies? How does that work? It's a squirt gun. So you pull the trigger and it squirts. That's a fluid technology. This is a basic representation of a hydraulic lift. The way a hydraulic lift works is the idea that you have a reservoir and you have a small piston and a large piston. The small piston can exert a lot of pressure on the, on the liquid. The small piston, by pushing on the small piston, this liquid goes down and this liquid will go up, pushing up the car. That is how hydraulics work and we have a video that's gonna show us. All right, uh, so we've seen the end of this and I don't think we need to see it again. All right, I'm gonna now go into a couple videos that I think are gonna help us understand more about mechanical and hydraulics and pneumatics, all right? So this is an interesting little video. This one, it's actually a school. So it's an advertisement for a school. So hang on, let me get to where we wanna be and make sure that I am actually presenting properly. Okay, so this is gonna be a little weird because they're trying to pitch you on this program that they're doing, but I want you to look at the devices that they're using, the kinds of mechanical devices that they are creating, just to get some ideas of what kinds of things are mechanical technology, okay? Students in the Mechanical Engineering Technology Program, you will be immersed in a world limited only by your imagination. Most of the items you touch every day have been designed and manufactured by a design engineer or engineering tech. From the cell phone keypad you use without a second thought to various tools or toys you use and enjoy, everything is conceptualized, designed, and created by someone. Why not you? To manufacture or build anything, the item must first be drawn. In much of the first year of this two-year associate's degree program, students learn technical drafting techniques, 2 and 3D design, modeling, and computer-aided drafting. In WIT's state-of-the-art advanced manufacturing labs, students utilize their skills using manufacturing equipment commonly used in industry. So, moving from the classroom to the workplace after graduation will be natural. You will learn from experienced instructors who have many years of industrial teaching and experience in the field. In a typical week, students are in the classroom, learning through hands-on labs and projects. 
At the end of the first year, students are awarded an industrial drafting diploma. Most students stay for the second year of the program as they build the skills obtained in the first year. Much of the second year is spent with hands-on activities related to developing the essential entry-level skills employers are looking for. One of the fun aspects of this program is developing and working on projects. If a student comes up with a great idea, the instructor could make it a class project and you could see it come to life. Or you can have the opportunity to develop a project on your own from beginning to end. The Project Trike is one such example. The trike was conceptualized, designed, and built from the ground up by teams of students from four different programs with engineering tech students taking the lead. As you can imagine, this program makes students think and solve problems, but in a fun way. Being able to take an idea and bring it to life is the heart and soul of mechanical engineering, and working as a team is a key component. Successful students will improve their ability to work with others through their classroom and lab experiences. Numerous career opportunities exist with manufacturing companies around Siouxland, such as Wilson Trailer, Prince Manufacturing, Wells Blue Bunny, Midwest Industries, GoMako, and others. Students have also found careers in locations throughout the country, such as with NASA, designing and building the navigation system for the Mars rover, with designs on the International Space Station, at Harley-Davidson, Coors Brewing Company, and many more. Now that we have your interest and you'd like to learn more about the program and WIT, please come for a visit. We would love the opportunity to meet you and show you all the possibilities that exist for graduates of this exciting program. While you are a student okay. at Western Iowa Tech, you will be issued a map. Western Iowa, the place for you. Okay, let's look at one more for, um, oh. Okay, I'll put this up to a vote. Do we want to watch the mousetrap car example or top innovative mechanical engineering projects? That's just going to show you a bunch of machines. The mousetrap car is pretty cool, and it's something they actually do in the engineering class here at Blair. Whichever one is longer. Oh, Jeremiah, I've got, I've got a stack of these babies. We, we can go all day, but I want to give you time to do with these quizzes. All right, I'm going to go. Well, I'm going to go with the mousetrap car, and then I'm going to ask you about it. Think about how does this car go forwards? Hang on. How does this car go forwards and backwards? What's happening here? They don't really show you, but I'm gonna ask you after this, and I know the answer. I'm Connor, I'm a uh, transfer student, sophomore in mechanical engineering robotics. Today we had a mousetrap car competition that was the design component of the intro engineering course for mechanical engineering. In it, we had to design a mousetrap car that goes out 10 feet and back in the shortest period of time possible. Every team is given two mousetraps and a set number of rubber bands. So in that, each team has to figure out how to uh, get the most energy out of that system and propel their car. Uh, it's especially interesting because they get to use different things like 3D printing to build their car, laser cutting, um, CAD models, but the most interesting thing for me personally is that they learned about how a team functions and works together. And the team dynamics are extremely important because that's something that you're going to use for the rest of your life in trying to accomplish projects. Okay. So I'm going to ask my friend Jeremiah. Jeremiah, how do you think those cars are going forwards and backwards? What's powering them? Any idea? Jeremiah? All right, well, I'm thinking of Jeremiah's. Oh, look, Dina has come up. Dina, I'm sure you can answer this for us. What do you, what do you think is powering the mousetrap car? How are those cars going back and forth with 10 feet? Um, you mean like which kind of technology or just like battery? No, no, just like in, in they're called mousetrap cars, but how do they move? What's powering them forward and backward? Is it like um, wind up? Like uh, when you, 
do you know what I mean? Like when you like uh, like a spring kind of. Right. Well, what it is, it's exactly that. It's the idea that each car has two mouse traps on it. Okay. The mouse traps are what are powering the car. The spring of the trap snapping shut. That is what is powering that car. You saw there was that one car that had the really long boom on it that slowly went up. That boom was attached to the mousetrap. So as it was you know, closing, it was so long that it was pulling up. They used it, I think, to wind up the other end. And then when it gets there, it's gonna go back. But the idea is that one trap is going to send it forward and then something has to trigger the next trap to send it back. It's an elegant system. Okay. Uh, how are we doing? We're doing okay. I think I'm gonna skip that. All right. We're gonna watch this video. This is very old, but it had the best Whoa, examples. Oh, not you. Cry. Come explore the site with me. I'm in first grade, so I'll pick that. Okay. Neato, a fun fishing adventure. <laughs> this is not good. How did my link get? Oh, it's because I let it go to the next video, I think. Um... There we are. This is the right. Machines and tools, they help us to do work. But do you know that many of these are pressure machines which use either the hydraulic system or the pneumatic system. Let's first look at the hydraulic system. But in order to understand what a hydraulic system is and how it works, we have to know two facts. The first fact is that when a liquid is enclosed in a space and a pressure is applied to the liquid, this pressure is transmitted equally to all parts of the liquid. This principle is illustrated using this pressure syringe. When the piston is pushed down, water squirts out uniformly in all directions from the holes of the flask. The second fact is that it is hard to compress a liquid. If you try to squash a volume of liquid, you still have that same volume, however hard you try to compress it. A hydraulic system is one that uses the pressure of a liquid to perform mechanical work. Let's look at this device. Two syringes, A and B, of equal size, are connected by rubber tubing. If pressure is exerted at syringe A, the same pressure will be transmitted over to syringe B. We also observe that the water from syringe A will move to syringe B as shown by the upward movement of the piston in syringe B. This demonstrates the two facts which we have just discussed. That is, firstly, when a liquid is enclosed in a space and a pressure is applied to the liquid, this pressure is transmitted equally to all parts of the liquid. And secondly, liquid cannot be compressed. The hydraulic system makes use of these two facts. It can be shown mathematically that if we make one of the two pistons much larger than the other, then the larger piston can raise a larger load.
The hydraulic system can therefore be considered as a force multiplier. Do you also notice that the small piston has to move a larger distance than the large piston? In most cases, oil is used as the hydraulic liquid as it can lubricate the moving parts of the machine as well. The hydraulic principle is used in many devices, like the hydraulic jack used for lifting cars at the service station. Notice that the serviceman has to exert a force on the piston many times before the car is raised by a small amount. Thanks to the hydraulic jack, lifting a car for servicing is no longer a problem. One of the most important components of a car is the brake system. But do you know that the brake system of a car also works on hydraulics? Let's take a closer look at the brake system of a car. When the driver presses on the brake pedal, the oil in the brake system transmits this pressure and moves these pistons. This will cause the brake pads to press against the rotating disc of the wheel. Hydraulics is also used in many heavy machinery in the construction industry, like this loader. Can you see the moving pistons in action? Machines using the hydraulic system are capable of moving very heavy loads. This is a dumper. It also works on hydraulics. The excavator is another hydraulic machine commonly found at construction sites. The hydraulic system will cause pistons to move a part of the machine back and forth. Imagine what it would be like if all this work had to be done without the help of these hydraulic machines. An accident? Thank goodness it's only a practice for the civil defense officers. They're trying to rescue a... Do you sometimes find the fear of what could happen is making... All right. I have one more that I'd just like to touch on and this... The problem with the last one is it doesn't go into pneumatics for us. This is the history of hydraulics and pneumatics. So you're really gonna learn something here. Fluids used in mechanical systems come in many different types. The type of fluid chosen for a particular application okay, depends on its I character. Hang on. Did I get the wrong link in there? Sorry, hang on. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. I want history. Yeah, history of hydraulics. The purpose of fluid power is to transmit power from one location to another. In the mid 1600s, Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician, made a very important contribution in the field of fluid motion. This contribution, known as Pascal's Law, relates the transfer of pressure through a fluid. Pascal determined that a contained pressurized fluid will exert pressure equally in all directions. Pascal's law states that pressure set up in a confined body of fluid acts equally in all directions and always at right angles to the containing surfaces. Another important property of fluid mechanics was discovered in the late 1600s by Robert Boyle, an Irish physicist. Boyle's law is an experimental gas law which describes how the pressure of a gas increases as the volume of gas decreases. A modern statement of Boyle's law 
is the absolute pressure of a confined body of gas varies inversely as its volume, provided its temperature remains constant. In a okay, quickly, when they say that the temperature is inverse to the, or yeah, that the pressure is inverse to the volume of the gas, what that is saying is that as you compress the gas, the pressure gets higher. As you decompress the gas, the pressure gets lower. As the, pr the piston goes down, pressure goes up. As the piston goes up, pressure goes down. That, that's what that means. Physical system, this means that as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. Similarly, as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Boyle's law can be expressed mathematically as the pressure at state one times the volume at state one is equal to the pressure at state two times the volume at state two. This is true as long as both the temperature and mass or amount of gas remains constant. In the late 1700s, Jacques Charles, a French scientist and mathematician, discovered an important rule regarding gases under pressure. Charles's law, also known as the law of volumes, is an experimental gas law which describes how gases tend to expand when heated. It states that if the pressure of a gas is constant and its temperature is raised, the volume will also be raised by the same ratio. Additionally, the inverse is true. If the pressure of a gas is constant and the temperature is lowered, the volume will also lower. Charles's law can be expressed mathematically as the ratio of the temperature at state one to the volume at state one is equal to the ratio of the temperature at state two to the volume at state two. This law is true as long as the pressure and mass remain constant. In the mid 1700s, Danielle Bernoulli discovered another very powerful rule in the field of fluid mechanics, known as Bernoulli's principle. This rule is related to the theory of conservation of energy, which states that energy can neither be created or destroyed. In this fluid system, pressure is potential energy and fluid flow is kinetic energy. Bernoulli's principle states that an increase in the speed of an incompressible fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure. This is illustrated by the flow of water through a pipe. The volume of water flow through all three sections is the same. When the water's flow is restricted in section B, the speed of the water increases to maintain the same amount of volumetric flow. This increase of speed simultaneously causes a decrease in pressure. When the flow of water reaches section C, the inverse occurs. The water flow decreases and the pressure increases. This rule can also apply to the types of energy present in the system. As the pressure decreases in section B, the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. This increases the speed of water flow and decreases the pressure. When the water reaches section C, the kinetic energy is converted back to potential energy. This is illustrated by the decrease in speed of the water flow and its simultaneous increase in pressure. Okay. Okay, for the last 10 minutes of class, what I want everyone to do, and I'm gonna do it right along with you, is do your quiz for mechanical and uh, fluid technology, all right? So I'm gonna go here. I want everyone to have a quiz at the end of today. I am gonna check and I will follow up with you if I don't see one. So open your quiz. I've already got stuff in here, I bet. I will delete it. Nope, here we go. Good, I didn't, it didn't say. Okay, so here are our vocabulary quizzes. Just to make sure everyone knows, 
the words for the quiz are right in the title. So our two vocabulary words, and sometimes they are more than one word, are mechanical technology and fluid technology. Rest assured, each one we have for the rest of this quarter is gonna be one of the, the core technologies. So when it says, what is the vocabulary? What is the vocabulary first term from the lesson? We want complete sentences. So we say, the term is colon. I'm just gonna copy mechanical technology. I want you guys doing this with me. Open it up. Let's do this. The term is mechanical technology. Now I have that, so my term can be defined as, I'm just gonna drop mechanical technology, can be defined as colon. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna to go to my nice sheet. Oh, somehow I, no, I didn't delete my sheet. No, I did delete my sheet. No, there it is. Okay, so I go to my sheet from my module that has all the, the core technologies. What I want right now is mechanical technology. I'm gonna take the definition, copy it. I'm gonna go back in and just drop it in here. So mechanical technology can be defined as the technology of putting moving parts together to produce control and transmit motion with examples. And I might put examples because that looks a little cleaner and nicer. All right, now all I need to do is put an image in. When you go to embed an image, it gives you this weird thing. You can put a URL in, but I have found real difficulty getting the URLs to work. Um, so what I did was I downloaded a picture. First, I went on the internet and I said, uh, what is it? Uh, car transmission. Right, that's mechanical technology. So let's take a look. Images. Wow, well, look, there's a great example of mechanical technology right there. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna uh, save image as, and ooh, look, I'm gonna put this, uh, what's this? Transmission, okay. So when I go back to my lecture, I'm just gonna go to Canvas and down here is upload file. From my files, I wanna upload a file. I'm gonna go in here and I want not photos, I want haunted house, examples, and there's my fabulous transmission. Okay, then I need to upload the font. Oh, I did just do that, all right? Once I've done that, I need to update, okay? There's my picture. When a picture is really small, if you click on it once, you get the cross marks. I can just pull it out to make it bigger, okay? So that's a nice image of mechanical technology. Let's do it again. What's the second vocabulary term of the lesson? I'm gonna go up here, copy that and say the second term is colon fluid technology. Your term can be defined as fluid technology can be defined as, and I'm gonna go back to my sheet, right? So where's fluid technology? Ah, here's the definition. Copy that, I come back, I drop it in here. So fluid technology can be defined as the technology of using fluid, either gases, pneumatics, or liquids, hydraulics, and apply force or to transport. Could be to apply force or to transport. Air brakes, oh, let me put my examples on here. All right, I still have four minutes left in class so I can find a photo. What do I want for fluid uh, waterfall? How about that? Let's look up.
Yeah, I like this guy better. So I copy my image. Oh, actually, I don't even want to copy it. I want to save as, right? Save image as, right back here, waterfall. Okay. Uh, then I just go back into my piece. I'm going to embed an image. I go to canvas. I pick my files. I hit upload file. And I'm going to pick waterfall. All right. Then I just hit update. Okay. There's my waterfall. If I click on it once. I can pull it out a little just to make it a little bigger. Come on, work with me. There's a nice waterfall. How about we put it, that's not even moving. All right, I'm happy with that. Uh, what level, I think I understand fluid well. And I'm not as good on what mechanical technology is. That's it. That's your quiz. Hit submit. I'd really like to see one from everyone. We have about two more minutes left in class. Let's get this done. I really want everyone passing. We can do this. Next class, I'm gonna have a lot of time to work on the big project, okay? I, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure everyone gets a vocabulary quiz in. I wanted to show you how to do it. Uh, most of, you know, most everyone is doing a great job, but just, you know, some people are having difficulty. Uh, I know we have ESOL students and it gets confusing. So I just wanna make sure to be providing you with all the tools you need. So you can be thinking about over the weekend now, what kind of cool things can you show in a haunted house or a dream house that are uh, fluid or mechanical technology? Let me show, I wanted to show you one of my favorite dream uh, haunted houses so far, okay? So this is the welcome to the haunted mansion of technology. Our nine core technologies, we're talking structural technology, nice definition. Now, how about this? Now, if you can't tell, there is an underground swimming pool under the beloved haunted mansion. If you drop an ounce of blood or show fear while in this room, the shark instantly prey and attacking and begins uh, any being that is standing over the swimming pool. The mad inventor created a glass blockage from the sharks, but the sharks can attack through the glass if they are, if they are proven to be its prey. <laughs> this is structural technology because the swimming pool designed for, for the sharks represents a technology form or put together. It's an in-ground pool, by the way. There you go. So she has these incredible sharks. Uh, welcome to the dark. Uh, there is a rocking chair that creaks with a ghost in it. Uh, the rocking chair is the structure. Now this one I really like. Okay, so this is your storm sewer example. The storm sewer is an example of structural technology. Okay, we're almost done. And what she put was Pennywise, the controller of the storm sewer, uses disguised voices to attract any human that may attempt to come in the haunted house. He likes, like the guardian tree, protects the mansion. If the human fears him, he senses it and eats him alive, beware. The descriptions and the fun being had in this project just really make me smile, okay? So that, uh, you know, we've got the, the, the troll bridge is a structure. The house is a structure. Okay. Great job. All right, we are done. It is the weekend. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for bearing with me. I apologize for being emotional, but some things really hurt. Some things really hurt you. And just thank you for listening. Thank you for commiserating. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone feels a little better. There's a brighter day tomorrow. There always is. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.
Mr. Yeah. Swim. Ah, look. Hi, um, was, the, was the last one you just showed us, which technology was that? This is, well, this is supposed to be both, but she was right. She forgot to put um, materials in. That these, she put all the structures. This is supposed to be structural and material. So this okay. needs to have material added to it. Okay, thank you. Have a nice weekend. No worries. Nelson, Brooke, Snell, can I help you? My new friend, Jackson. Great job today, Jackson. I appreciate your help. Nelson, Schnell, anybody? Okay, team, I'm running away. Have yourself a great weekend.